what are my thoughts on the, tr uh, the process of transitioning from the old energy economy to the new energy economy? Where are we now? Where are we going? How fast is it going to change? You know, do, how do we deal with this White House and so forth? So uh, let me be very clear. Uh, I, I have been for the last five to ten years a huge uh, advocate of solar and an all-electric economy, and I am ten times more assured of that than ever before. And in fact, it's worse, it's worse than that for the car companies, oil and gas companies, which is you're going to take your $80,000 BMW and you're going to throw it away. You're going to give it away, you're going to try and sell it, you're going to scrap it, you're going to park it, you're going to like sell it for parts because it's so much cheaper to have an electric autonomous car that you just don't want it anymore. Hey, I'm Steven and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So in this video, we're hearing from Peter Diamandis, serial entrepreneur, lifelong space nerd, and personal friend of Elon Musk. Many of you have asked me, how did I find Tesla? Why did I invest in Tesla stock? What drew me to invest in the company? Well, the truth is, I've never gone out looking for a stock to invest in in my life. Instead, I'm a total nerd. I'm really interested in what's happening in science and technology, and I listen to people like Peter Diamandis. In fact, I've read all three books that he's co-published, and I think they're absolutely fantastic insights, and they've been fundamental in my understanding where the future is heading and gaining so much confidence in the very few stock investments I've actually made. So if you're an average stock investor just seeking average returns, no point in watching this video. Go look up the five best stocks to buy right now, look at some technical analysis, have a bit of a wank, and then great, you'll be really comfortable and happy. Meanwhile, if you'd like to gain a new perspective, another dimension, a new way of looking at things and identifying opportunities in the future, this video is for you. Let's get into it. But first, hey guys, if you're in the US and you'd like three free stocks, yes, one, two, three free stocks, check out the link in the description to Weeble. Open a new account and fund it with $100 and you'll get three free stocks, two of them valued up to $1,600. And if you're in Australia, the UK or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Let's get back to it. We have been, over time, transitioning from energy source to energy source, right? We were using whale oil at one point for lighting. And it was a very expensive source of energy. Then we went to kerosene and petroleum. And, and then all of a sudden we start to see petroleum getting a bit scarce, but then technology comes in and allows us to drill 5,000 feet below the ocean surface and then 5,000 feet below the ocean floor and 5,000 feet over and we, we access huge oil reserves in the ocean floor. Technology took oil from scarce to abundant over and over again. And then natural gas becomes online and then technology like fracking takes it from scarce to abundant and now we're an energy exporter. And so energy wasn't scarce in that regard because it kept on giving us openings to more and more energy sources, but with consequences, right? It's going back to the consequence of the horse manure of the hydrocarbons we're pumping into the atmosphere. The beautiful thing is that we live on a planet that is bathed in 8,000 times more energy from the sun that hits the Earth's surface than we consume as a species in a year. 8,000 times more than necessary is an absolute shit ton. In fact, since most of you guys and girls are investors and financially minded, here's an example. If your net worth is $125,000 and you multiply that by 8,000 times, you end up at $1 billion. That's a pretty large margin, a pretty large excess, as Peter said, an abundance. In fact, a super abundance of energy. So the key here is simply harvesting that. It's like free money coming from the sky every day all over the planet. All we need to do is harvest this. So there's not a shortage of energy. There's plenty of energy, 8,000 times more energy than we need. A squanderable abundance of energy. It's just not in a fully usable form yet. But technology, again, is the force that takes what used to be scarce and makes it abundant. And so we're seeing that. We're seeing the cost of solar plummeting, right? We're seeing the efficiency of conversion of photons to electrons hitting new record highs every year. We're seeing the amount of energy entering the grid 
at 25% from renewables and wind is you know, ahead of solar today, solar will overtake it over time and I think we're going to head towards an all or mostly solar electric economy. I'm in complete and utter agreement with Peter here. And it's not just because I've got a funny feeling in my nether regions. It's because I've done the numbers, I've looked at the declining cost curves, the improving efficiency of solar, looking at battery costs declining over time and understand the economics make this such a compelling case. It is an obvious and inevitable outcome. I didn't buy Solar City stock in February 2016 because I liked the name of the company. I invested in Solar City because I saw the potential of solar and I liked their business model. And a few interesting things. We're seeing countries like Costa Rica, the Netherlands, parts of the UK going to all, uh, all renewables and making those claims, all of a sudden we're starting to see uh, a growing expectation in electric cars. And let me, let me tell you, I used to think that petrochemicals were going to stick around. Why? Because we've got hundreds of millions or billions of cars out there that are going to be gas guzzlers. And these cars would, would be on the road for decades, right? How many, you know, 1980 cars or 1990 cars are still on the road? They last for 20, 30, 40 years. And as long as they need petroleum, you're going to have the oil and gas uh, industry going. But something's changed. And that is that the autonomous car is coming online and all the plans for autonomous cars are electric autonomous cars. And those electric autonomous cars are going to be 10 times cheaper and 10 times better. When I say better, easier, no auto insurance, no driveway, no maintenance. It's there when you need it. You can have any kind of car on demand. It's car as a service. And so by 2025, right, what is that, eight years from now, the estimate is car ownership is dead. A lot of millennials today are opting for Ubers versus buying cars anyway. It's a 10% niche already. Uh, we're seeing every major car company scrambling, I mean scrambling, to get to reinvent themselves as car as a service. Because no one's going to be buying cars anymore. You're just not. Those of you who haven't seen my recent Tony Seba video about autonomous vehicles causing vehicle sales to collapse will probably find this a little bit of a controversial statement. I highly recommend you check out that video and then come back. Let's just assume for a moment that Peter is in fact correct, that electric autonomous vehicles are the future of transportation and will cause an enormous disruption. Question, who has the lead in electric vehicle technology? Spoiler alert, that would be Tesla. And another question, who has the lead in autonomous technology? <laughs> Spoiler alert, that would also be Tesla. Do you guys see where I'm going with this, don't you? And in fact, it's worse, it's worse than that for the car companies, oil and gas companies, which is you're going to take your $80,000 BMW and you're going to throw it away. You're going to give it away, you're going to try and sell it, you're going to scrap it, you're going to park it, you're going to like sell it for parts because it's so much cheaper to have an electric autonomous car that you just don't want it anymore. Did you feel that? That gut reaction? What are you talking about, you crazy brick? $80,000 BMW, you gotta fucking throw it away for scrappy or a moron? Well, here's the thing. Electric autonomous vehicles, transport as a service, will be 10 times cheaper than personal vehicle ownership. In addition to owning this car that's 10 times more expensive than transport as a service, you also have to park it in a garage, you've got to pay your insurance, all kinds of other BS as well. The convenience of not having a vehicle, literally, you're going to want to get rid of this thing that's wasting space and draining you of money. It's better to do that than keep it collecting dust. Unless, of course, you happen to be one of those hoarders who likes to swim over piles of newspapers stacked two meters high to get to your front door every day. In which case, sure, keep your $80,000 BMW in the garage you're never going to use again. Whatever. So all of a sudden, the long future tail of oil and gas is shut down. And so, yes, we're going to need oil and gas for plastics and petroleum products and so forth, but they're fucked, I think, is the, is the final bottom line. Fucked is a massive understatement. Just seven years ago, ExxonMobil was the world's largest company. Today, Tesla is almost three times the size, and ExxonMobil stock price is about 20% below where it was two decades ago. They really are fucked. Yeah, and, and so... and. 
And so when the government stops being the, um, uh, it's, I mean, the, I, I value the support of NSF and EPA and NOAA and OSHA and all the government agencies to help, but if all of a sudden they're blocked and they're not able to, I much more expect entrepreneurs to come in and offer a product that's 10 times better for us, like getting rid of the horse and bringing in the car, and now bringing in the electric autonomous car, so that our, it's actually in our best interest. And so that's so much better when it's in our best interest to actually use the product and service that's better for us, and oh, by the way, it's better for the environment as well. So you're not, it's not laws driving this, it's not, you can't have on a whim someone change that, it's just everybody's choosing that because it's that much better for them. So when you've got that kind of alignment, everybody wins. Peter is absolutely spot on here once again. Tesla doesn't need help. Nobody needs the help now. The economics are compelling enough that every consumer on the planet, every business over time will convert to renewable, sustainable forms of energy, mostly solar, maybe wind and a bit of hydro, storing that energy in batteries and using it later. This is the future. No help necessary. The economics are so compelling now that the transition is happening irrespective of whether or not there's any incentives or help for governments or other agencies. This is why in recent videos I've said that a Biden administration isn't actually going to be meaningfully useful to Tesla because Tesla's already selling every product they make. They already have compelling prices, they're already highly profitable, and they're already stacking more money than they can spend. So incentivizing people to buy electric vehicles, battery and solar isn't going to assist Tesla because as I said, they're already selling every product they make and they're doing so very profitably. It's not going to hurt. I mean, they're going to be stacking more money in their bank account as a result of this. But the point is, no help is necessary. The economics make this transition now inevitable. It's just a matter of watching some entrepreneurs like Elon Musk and many others actually take an outsized share of this market by helping the world transition away from fossil fuels. We no longer need to do this because it's the right thing to do. It's going to happen now because it's the logical thing to do. Yeah, but no, this is a future where you don't need solar subsidies. You know, I'm, I, I love this. I'm on the board of Hyperloop One. I'm a founding board member, and I fly my plane out of Santa Monica into Nevada to go to the test site to see how they're doing. They've got their full, uh, full up test track, which is going to be the Kitty Hawk moment that's going to be coming online in the next few months. I can't say exactly when, but when I go in and I fly in with AJ or Cody or the team, you know, I'm overflying all these photovoltaic farms, right? These black. Uh, solar panels, and then the solar thermal uh, farms, right, which are all these mirrors focusing the sunlight up at this tower of these molten salts, and it's, they're beautiful, they're gorgeous, and they're right out of Las Vegas, and they're, they're powering a lot of, of Las Vegas today, but when I fly back in LA, all you see is concrete and rooftops, and there's no place for that, but guess what? In Normandy this year, uh, they just deployed a few kilometers of solar roads, and we're gonna see Tesla deploying solar rooftops. And so we're gonna turn every rooftop, every glass surface, every road surface into electron generating capabilities. And remember earlier how I said I don't go out looking for stocks to invest in? I just happen occasionally to notice an opportunity because I'm a nerd and I'm paying attention to the progress of science, technology, and what's going on. This is one of those moments again. Peter Diamandis here suggesting that in the future, our rooftops will be generating enormous amounts of energy using solar. Pop quiz, who has the cheapest solar per kilowatt hour in the United States at the moment? Tesla, who has the most compelling product that's a little bit more expensive than panels, but much more integrated? That would be Tesla again with the solar glass roof. Today, outside of countries that get an enormous amount of sun exposure, there's very few people generating energy from their rooftops. In the future, the vast majority of people will be generating energy from their rooftops where conditions allow. Do the math. There's a lot of growth ahead for Tesla Energy. We're going to end up in a situation where you are incentivized to put it on your rooftop because you get free electricity. We're going to democratize, dematerialize, demonetize energy production, and we're going to make the grid safer by getting rid of it. Did somebody say energy arbitrage, virtual power plants, auto bit of software? Right, I mean, uh, we're living in a world where our grid is such a weakness. It's a, it's a huge limitation. It's, well, if there's ever an electromagnetic pulse and our grid goes down, everything goes right. down, 
right? But imagine instead if you've got the ability to have solar produced every place. And oh, by the way, one of the key points about solar, the world's poorest countries are the sunniest countries on the planet, right? So you can see South and Central America, Africa, Middle East becoming massive energy exporters. So it's an interesting change, and I guarantee you the gameplay that the, that the petrochemicals company, unless they're like just blinders on, they may be, they've got to know this is coming, right? Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Qatar, Saudi all know this is coming. They've been investing massively in this area. If you want the typical returns of a typical stock investor, think and act like a typical stock investor. If, on the other hand, you're looking for outsized returns, getting a piece of enormous, disruptive, innovative technologies, then I highly recommend instead of wanking around over PE ratios and multiples, instead gain a comprehensive, big picture understanding of the technological trends that are happening and the inevitable future that we're moving towards. This is how you identify opportunities while other investors are out in the marketplace not understanding why the f*** you're putting all your money into a company called Tesla in 2016, 17, 18 and 19 and then you make a YouTube channel about it because people still don't get it and you really would like them to get it. I don't know who I'm talking about. Hope you guys have found this video insightful. I'm really trying to illustrate a point here. If you want to play in the sandpit and live in a two-dimensional world of numbers and balance sheets and financials and PE ratios and stuff, go for your life. That's fine. It's important to understand this as well, but I think that that's where most investors get stuck. Two-dimensional flatland. Take a bird's eye view. Get that third dimension of perspective in understanding disruptive, innovative technologies. Look at trends, look at cost declines, map that understanding onto the opportunities you see in the marketplace, and that is how you pick the real outsized winners. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan, this is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. Oh, by the way guys, if you're still here, please do yourself a favor and read Peter Diamandis' books as a starting point. There's a link in the description to all three. You can listen to one of them for free with an audible trial using the links below, so you've got nothing to lose and a hell of a lot of insight to gain. If you're in the US and you'd like three free stocks, check out the link in the description to Weeble. Open a new account and fund it with $100 and you'll get three free stocks, two of them valued up to $1,600. And if you're in Australia, the UK or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular q and our private discord server and more consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so i can keep creating content for you guys there's a link in the description you can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks to learn more click the join button next to subscribe and don't forget to check out our merch store either way the best form of support is you being here and watching so thanks again